Oh yeah, back again. Right then, uh, I think on this video I'm going to uh, touch on the subject uh, that everybody seems to be quite interested about, a bit of watercraft. Um, I'll tell you what I've been doing for the first month before I go too deep. Um, went down to Wales, had a cracking time in Wales with a good friend of mine, Mike Stacey. Um, he's a bit of a novice, he's only been carp fishing probably a couple of years. But uh, we went down there, had an absolutely fantastic time, absolutely tipping it down with rain most of the time. And uh, what we had, what was it, 16 fish or somewhere thereabouts, uh, most of them 20 pounders, um, down the southwest corner of Wales. And uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, I'll show you Mike in a minute with a, playing a couple of fish and a few of the pictures of the fish we had. But using a bit of watercraft there and what the weather was like. Um, you know, I'd never fished the water before, but keeping your eyes open, seeing where, the, where you see the fish. Uh, obviously, if you see the fish uh, in a certain area, it's, it's pointless banging loads of bait in. You know, it, it all, like watercraft's quite a, a funny subject to be honest. It's, it's one of these subjects, it's, it's not really, you know, it's not something you can go into a tackle shop and buy. Uh, it comes with experience basically, you know, like my fishing experience is uh, Well, I've been fishing like 30, 35 years plus uh, Fished the River Seven, Brown Bridge North uh, Fished for barbel, chub, roach, pike, uh, obviously carp um, You know, it all adds to it, like working out how to get roach feeding up in the water Little and often, you could do the same with carp with you know, using uh, floaters, um, little and often you, you get on competing better than just piling a load in. Um, like for instance with barbel, um, it's aggressive feeding, can get on, get on feeding really well. Greedy pig rig for carp, same sort of approach, you know, you're getting the fish to give in and trip up on their greed basically. Uh, it's another, another little touch of uh, you know getting into watercraft it's, it's basically running off experiences gut feelings and, and other things you can do um, and you know keeping your eyes open you know so like when we were in Wales uh, fishing the far margin um, had a couple of fish out the margin and while I was round on Mike's peg I noticed a couple of lows down the middle of the lake and as it worked out I uh, put a a rod in the middle, same same sort of range as where I was fishing the margin up the lake against this overhanging tree, but it was quite funny. The pressure in the margins pushed them out, and keeping your eyes open um, and seeing where the fish were blowing, and put like me safe 360 rig out there just as a single, and, and that did me two 20 pounders on the last morning. You know, and it's little things like that. It's. Uh, you know, and knowing what to do. Like, to be honest, my impression of watercraft is uh, probably comes more from like what I think is true watercraft. Probably comes from um, like the rivers and that type of thing, where you watch the rivers, watch the flow. Uh, there's a boil in the water, an obstacle under the water. That's that's more my impression of watercraft. But obviously. In carp fishing, the water, way watercraft works there is basically keeping your eyes open, trusting your gut feeling, which comes through experience when you know you've been fishing on the bank for years and years. Um, you can, if you trust your gut feeling, like now, you know, if I get a couple of liners in the night um, and I'm fishing quite a t tight patch, patch of bait. Um, if I don't get a pick up within an hour and a half, I'll reel that rod in, even though it's middle of the night, reel it in, half a rod shorter, clip it up, drop it out, and nine times out of ten, that'll do me a bite. And, you know, like years ago, before I got so much confidence, I suppose, if you like, um, I would have left that and sat there, you know, and maybe not had a bite at all. But there's things you can do, trust your gut feeling, and... Uh, and think you know something's worked for you before trust your gut feeling and go with it and uh, and that's that's like my interpretation of uh, 
watercraft really it's uh, it's more things you see things you notice you're always learning you know you might see um, watching the water and you might see a, a coot spook off by the side of some pads to sell something or you might see fish uh, around, by, around the side of this island um, you know that's just one part of it because nine times out of ten they're not feeding carp they're sunbathing carp but if you know that's where they go maybe you can trip them up on a patrol route on the way there so you know it's it's find, finding out all the little pieces to a jigsaw really so uh, what I'll do I'll, uh, I'll show you a, a few clips of uh, us in Wales and I'll get back to you with our uh, bit more watercraft talk okay see you in a minute yeah, walk up the bank here, mate, because you're going to catch that corner. Oh, it's not. It's that one. Of the, is it the middle? I think it's the middle one. Again. Yeah, it is the middle one. Yeah, it's take your time. Just keep him coming, mate, because you can pull him through the weed there, aren't you? Almost walk up the bank towards my stuff, and you'll just get him out of that corner. So what I mean? The right spot, mate, and you're bloody... Yeah, just keep him coming, because you'll, you'll come through that weed. Nice and steady. He's there now, isn't he? I'll tell you what, he took some light. Here we come. Get him in here. Where are Keep the tip up. Keep pulling him, keep pulling Well done, that man. <coughs> You want candy camera again? <laughs> Are you My lines are on the deck, mate, you're fine. You want me to get the net now, don't you? Yeah. I'm good. Oh, nice mirror. Let you do the work, man. Fish. See what I mean? If we hadn't put some back leads, it would have been all over your other rods now. Yeah. This is the bloody axe bus, isn't it? Pulling a bit, isn't he?
It's in deep picture. <laughs> oh, it's a nice one. It is a nice one. Yeah, it's a nice one. He's, uh, he's his smaller brother. Yeah. Bloody hell. They pull a bit, don't they? Yeah, and this is very light, this reel. Well done, that man. Okay. I, I'm glad I changed to you a pop up. <laughs> Was he 22 and a half? 22 and a half. Yeah. Okay. That's it, mate. Try and hold him the same way. That's it. That's it. Beautiful, mate. Beautiful. 22 and a half pound mirror. Like a lot of little things that uh, I do in my fishing, um, like me baiting, is uh, you know me baiting and rigs for instance. Like me rigs for one, it's not something I worry about. Uh, you know, like you see a lot of people. Oh, I didn't catch on that rig. Maybe I'll use this rig and go on like that. And like with myself, I got probably two, three or four maybe, maximum of four rigs that I'm confident in. I've got a main two that I use quite a lot. Um, I mean like Van Gexels and that type of thing. But the, uh, you know, the rigs, something I don't have to put that much thought into anymore. I've got rigs I'm confident in. Fish picks up the bait. I know I'm going to up the fish and I know I'm going to land the fish. You know, I'm, I'm that confident in my rigs. Um, as for bait, uh, I'm going to worry about whether the fish are going to eat me bait or that, you know, I didn't catch this session or I'm going to have to change my bait and try something else. You know, it doesn't even come into me line of thinking. You know, my thinking is finding the fish. And so I've found the fish. If the fish are in a certain area, I'll, um, small, small little traps maybe, even down to stringers with, you know, a couple of crushed up baits. In a, in a bag sort of fishing. Um, a lot of it is common sense, like watercraft, common sense, uh, using your eyes. It's It all seems to roll into uh, the same sort of thing, you know, gut feeling. Um, it's it very, very much so your uh, experiences on the bank. Um, you know, if you, if you try something, for instance, like you see a lot of people turn up to a lake, chuck in two kilo of bait, stick a rig on it. Blank, 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 blank. They catch, well that's worked. They carry on doing the same thing, week in, week out, week in, week out. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, most approaches work at some point through the year. I think every approach will work at some point through the year. But it's fine tuning it instead of it's a bit like um, I don't know colours of pop ups it's like we do the arrangement of like the uh, rainbow pop ups so uh, you can change the colours and keep the flavour which is brilliant and you know I use those ever such a lot um, it's a red pop up out and that was all I fished on three rods the law of averages are going to say that I'm going to catch fish on it. And if I keep catching fish on it, just say one bite a session, for instance, on, on a red popple. And I think, oh yeah, that works. But there might be a different colour that will work better on a certain day. Uh, instead of going away with one fish, I could go away with three or four fish. 
so like I'm always ringing the changes I, d I don't you know sit there and say well this is how I'm going to fish it I'm going to put 10 baits on that 20 baits on that you know it, I go with the weather go with the uh, you know the air pressure um, whether the much has been out the lake uh, there's loads of things that go into it like watercraft putting all the pitch pieces together is sometimes a bit of a nightmare and if you get it all right on on the day you could end up with like five six fish and all big fish as well you know so it's um but going like going back to the colors of pop-ups if you um, you know p pick one color and stick with it and everybody's doing the same generally you're going to catch probably the same as everybody else but do your own thing, follow your gut feeling. Like, like I'm always trying something different on one rod. One rod. Um, for instance, if it's if it's quite quiet and nothing much has come out of the lake all week, I'll still put quite a bit of bait just on one rod, just to try, because law of averages are there's still going to be a greedy pig swimming around there somewhere. So it's it's always worth a go. Um, you know, it's it's a minefield, it really. It's uh, watercraft. Um, you know, fi trying to figure out where the fish are, fish fishing tight spots in the weed. Um, if there's a small spot, generally I'll rather fish a smaller, tighter spot than a larger, big spot because basically the larger spots are where generally most people have been fishing. So um, it's it's definitely you know it's definitely something to think about. It's you know not trying things in the edge as well. There's um, see that bug just creeping out. There you go. <laughs> trying things in the edge. I'm always messing around. You know I'm not one of these. I'll just sit in my bivy and say I'll I'll do the same as last week. See that rod there? What right there? And I'll put that one over there. Ten baits. Ten baits. Ten baits. You know that's not my fishing at all. Um, I'm always trying something and nine times out of ten if a rod kicks off on bait then another rod will be put on close to it to join it um, or if I'm scratching uh, and the session I'm picking fish up scratching for bites like with a couple of crumbed up baits type of thing then I'll try another say margin spot with the same sort of approach and you know you, I'm working at me fishing um, Clarity of water, you know. There's so much to, so much to think about with uh, with your watercraft um, directions of where fish go, whether it's a patrol route or a feeding spot. You know, obviously, if it's a patrol route, I generally don't put tons of bait down on a patrol route. I'd rather put little traps, maybe get a curiosity take off a little bright bait or something like that. So it's, you know, there's thousands of different variations of things whether it's high pressure low pressure raining sunny freezing cold like for instance in the winter um, when I fished on Bowmere and um, considering high pressure when there's a frost clear skies totally clear skies so it's high pressure um, so I found the fish down in like 34 foot of water so it gave me the impression the cold frosty weather pushed them down it's generally on the first frost of uh, you know if you got it's been mild for a couple of weeks and you get a really f bad frost first frost um, the cold generally pushes the fan pushes the fish down and you'll see them blowing in the deep water first thing in the morning and it, it spins it all on its head a bit it's it sometimes it makes me think well on low pressures it really the, the fish drop down in the low pressure or is it more from all the cold rain and the cold pushing them down you know it's it's one of them things and it, you know because I'm not a fish I don't really know but you go off your experiences so if it's low pressure you fish out in open water on the first frost for instance from my own experiences I fish deeper deeper water and generally first thing in the morning after a good frost you'll find one and you know there'll be people out there probably agreeing and they'll say yeah I remember having a bite when it was a first frost or heavy snow or something like that it's that's that cold and it seems to push them down into the deeper water same thing it's it's all goes into your, into your watercraft bank in the back of your head you know things things you find out uh, colors of pop-ups uh, from that to 
greedy pig rigs, keeping it tight. Like generally, how I'll fish, I'll fish a, a tight patch of bait, whether it's less bait, I'll spread it a bit, but the more bait I put in, I'll keep it really tight because I, you know, I, I want to keep the fish as close as I can to my rigs. So, uh, you know, if I'm baiting up an area of a football field and I've got one rig in it, and I'm only after like there's a lake with say 10 fish in it, you know, I've really cut my chances down on getting a bite. Um, if uh, if I've tightened it right up, like it probably goes against with uh, what a lot of carp fishermen will say, you know, you've got to spread it out, keep the fish moving and that type of thing. But uh, I get enough bites off tight patches because my rig's never more than a couple of foot away from the fish. Obviously if I'm on a lake with a lot of big fish, like a lot of big fish, then I will spread it and I'll probably spread, like on the old silty mares, I'll spread my rods over uh, a bigger area, but I'll keep it like almost like a channel. So I can catch off one end of the spot and, you know, and I'm not disturbing the other, so I'm, you know, I'm getting uh, double chances of it takes in the morning if you like so if I caught say off the right hand rod I'll put that rod out spook that area from having a fish and there's I've got a rod 20 yards away but it'll be on a channel probably only about three or four foot wide like a strip of bait so uh, that's that type of approach works uh, or like I say a greedy pig spot where it's almost like you've just tipped it straight out of a bucket stick a rig in the middle of it and there is there's always a greedy pig swimming around the lake so uh, yeah trying to learn off other people as well that's another good thing um, not so much copying people and I'll do this and I'll do that it's more it, 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 I suppose it does go into the watercraft sort of uh, basis it, it's all it's all the learning but it's pr probably clever thinking as much as anything else if you um, for instance you've been fishing on a lake you fished there for a couple of three times and uh, not caught anything and you're always redoing your rods it's say, one o'clock in the afternoon dinner time and and there's a couple of fish come out at say I don't know off past one uh, you know to me that's gonna be telling me oh that's bite times so I've got to pick a different time of the day to rebate up or redo my rods so it's little things like that it's, it's not so much copying people, it's more taking in information that you find, like if Joe Bloggs over the pool has had a fish at four o'clock in the afternoon and then there's another chap up the other end of the lake is a, another time you go he's had one at four o'clock. It's telling you the bite times. Oh no, you haven't had a fish in your net, but it's telling you the bite times so now you're, you've got something to work around. It's little touches like that. It's, um, you know, for instance, when I was, uh, when I was, fishing the mangrove quite hard last year I uh, there's a fish called Conan I was trying to catch and it's a really old fish it's been in there a long time and uh, it, it's, it's just like it, I was just struggling to catch a certain fish and, um, and I, was, I thought I went home and I really thought about it and I've I know Sean Harrison had been fishing it and I looked at it and he, he actually used uh, a spicy uh, hook baits and, and a couple of the other guys that on there had used spicy hook baits and like, peppery hook baits, that type of thing. And, uh, and I got to thinking, I thought, well, I'll try something. And basically what I did, I peppered up and chilled up a bit of hemp seed and generally I don't use particles, so I'm more of a boiling angler. And, um, and it was quite funny how it went off. I uh, literally went out in the boat, tipped a bucket of uh, spicy impact, peppered a few uh, monster squid over the top, dropped a rig in the middle of it. Never guess the first fish that came along that night. Yep, Conan. So, you know, it's little things like that, and you know, I've learned a little bit off other people. You know, it's just putting all, all the pieces together and getting them to fit. So, you know, if you can do that, it makes a world of difference to your, uh, to your angling. I've got a little bit of video footage you can and I'll show you that now if you like. There we go. Really old fish. What a beauty. Oh, well chopped to get this one. I like the old character fish. My fang X hook. Little snowman again.
just fishing off the patch of bait because I think they're getting a bit wise. Oh, getting a bit wise for the bait. That's it. £29.12 usually goes 30 but that don't bother me at all. <laughs> well just I'll get it back and I'll show you the other one. Go now. Well there's like a thousand and one things uh, you know in watercraft in the carp fishing jigsaw. Um, you know it's a bit like sitting on the back of a wind uh, and the, you know my winter winter fishing I love my winter fishing and it's you know it's October now uh, I know it's sunny now but it's a real cold wind this morning um, the fish are generally going to be sat on the on the back of the wind at the moment on this lake anyway but like when I fished on the swamp uh, they were all on the teeth of the wind which did make it quite uncomfortable through the winter but that's where the fish were and so you you know you try and draw off your experiences uh, of what you you know what you learn when you go um, try not to fall into the trap of uh, just you know I'll fish that spot because Joe Bloggs had a fish off it last week and uh, and that type of thing you try and think for yourself and and find your own put your own little pieces into the jigsaw and you might surprise yourself you know if uh, if everybody's catching off a you know bright red bait try something different you never know it might surprise you or you know like for instance when I was uh, fish the church pool they were all on tiny little patches of bait you could turn up fill it in doing something different totally different nobody else you know whether they got the guts to do it or or what this is going back quite a few years and and the fish just you know they hadn't seen bait like that for for a long time and I just caught loads of fish you know it's it's one of those things it's uh, it's just keep keep your mind open and and keep trying something new uh, it you know it keeps it stops your your carp fishing not so much getting boring but it keeps it really interesting and finding new things to try and uh, all along those lines so uh, keep thinking about your carping and uh, and I hope you get some some whackers uh, off a few little bits and pieces that you know you you might find out along the way so uh, I hope you found this one interesting so uh, I'll see you again next time thanks very much I like dropping a little bit of bait in the edge here and there but um, what does help to be honest is wearing your polarised glasses and obviously if I'm filming it a little uh, polarised lens so I'll snap this on makes well the difference you know it does the same with your polarised glasses uh, if you're trying to get a bit of footage or trying to see the fish it shows you how much uh, polarised lens works for you